peace to the YouTube fam. It's your boy Ray Imperial back with another edition of Imperial Diaries. Uh, so, uh, today's video, we discuss a couple of milestones. Uh, shout out to all the viewers, you know what I mean? Like, we, we, we pushing 600, we at like 580 right now. Um, that was a nice surprise. I woke up to that, uh, right around the day of my birthday. So, that, 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 that was huge. Uh, and speaking of birthdays, um, Rain is 10 months old now, right? Um, and she's already in heat, right? She's going in the heat like a grown girl. She's flagging and she's standing for the stick. Are we going to breed? Not this trip. Not this trip. Um, that's going to probably take place uh, a year or so down the line. Henny has a birthday coming up in April, so Henny will be five years old now. Um, she's officially the smallest dog I have now. Raina outgrew her, outweighs her, taller than her, uh, and seems to be more agile. I'd, I'd argue maybe faster. We'll have to see. Still uh, testing them against each other. You know, that Imperial touch. So, I want to shout out to my boy. Oh, shit, I forgot what he gonna call this shit, but. My boy is uh, definitely, he in the mix, doing his thing. Um, and this is cultivated from seed to harvest cultivated from seed to harvest ain't no more buying that off the block shit you know what i mean so and you know i didn't cultivate that but a partner of mine did as new york looks to legalize um we're gonna be moving in the direction of uh grabbing some land so that we can facilitate both our vision and goals for these dogs as well as the vision and goals cultivating um cannabis but uh with all of that said there's been a video that i've been working on for quite some time and i can't never seem to get all the fucking ingredients in place to put it out like i want to and that video is um dealing with the adb adba's breed reclassification and ultimately you know what is a camelot dog right what is a camelot dog um you hear people screaming oh those are bullies and you hear me screaming i mean no bullish bro <laughs> you know what i mean like this 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 is not your average bully right so um the question begs what is a camelot dog right so um going forward we're gonna be getting we're, we're gonna be digging into that question a little bit more step by step right um we're gonna be digging into some pedigrees we're gonna be digging into some some background and some other things you know what i mean and and then we're gonna really get into what it means to own a camelot dog uh you know uh in light of say owning your typical box dog that's matched at 40 pounds 30 pounds um when now you're talking about a dog twice that size um so you're talking about twice the power you know all of that so there, there, there are unique sets of circumstances which 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 come into play when dealing with these dogs and how you raise them and train them and all of that uh, It is necessary to preface some of my statements, right, some of this work by, you know, making it clear that, you know, a lot is going on in the world, right, like, like in terms of the APBT and breeding and so forth and so on, a lot, a, a lot is going on. And one of the things that um, I'm finding is, is really uh, critical is the understanding that you cannot judge 
like take take for example Eli Dogs, right? You can't judge all Eli by what Cardenas does, right? You get a you you get a Cardenas fuck, and 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 that's what you running, and win, lose, or draw. You can't judge the entire Eli strain, the entire Eli strain of pit bull, based on this stuff, right? And and likewise, you know, if you was running Wakamal or or or, or Tan or you know, uh, 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 the, the Cottingham shit, you know, you know, you can't take a dog off Boomer and say, okay, this is what all Cottingham does, right? Or, or the, this is what all Red Boy does. Um, with that said, in the Camelot world, um, there were two main divisions, right? And we're going to get into that a little bit. But my point is that different breeders breed for different traits, different characteristics, right? Um, and my purpose for breeding is I'm looking for a powerful, athletic cat channel. Right, this, this this dog has got to have all the freaking tools that the American pit bull Terry was bred for, but with a little more size and a little more power. Right, um, it is necessary to understand that you know if you send a dog in against a dog against a hog. Three, four hundred pounds, two hundred fifty pounds. There's some wear and tear on that dog, man. You understand? Good dog, he brings the hog down and all of that, but there's some wear and tear on that dog. So, um, I find the, I find the, the, the more sturdier dogs, the more rugged, more, more, more durable, and that's what I want in my dog. And I mean, they should, they should be able to, they, they should be able to stand a, you know, they should be able to stand a, a nice rough road. You know what I mean? Period. So that person, that's what I personally breed for, right? So. When I decided to get into breeding, when I decided that I was going to go ahead and, and, and uh, perpetuate this blood that I'm that that that, that, I'm, that, that, that that's in my can, one of the things I had to come to grips with was the fact that I wasn't 100% satisfied with my boy's structure, right? Um, and I didn't breed him, right? But I also see what else came out of that litter, right? Um, in addition to that, we have the fact that he has traits, he has characteristics that most dog men I know more I know but die for. Like, it's not a timid animal. Not a timid dog. Please. So, the other thing that my dogs must be able to do, man, is I, I need stable temperament dogs. I don't need a dog that's a hair trick, right? So, if there are hounds running down the hogs, and my dog is, is is brought along to bring the hog down. I don't need him jumping on the hounds, right? So with that, he has to. He got to be able to have a, have enough stable temperament to take direction in a high prey drive situation. Now, what I love about my boy is that once he's set to a task, I don't care what it is, flirt pole, spring pole, other dogs around, like, listen, you don't want to hear it. Unless that dog's literally at his heels, yapping at him, 
He ignored me in that door. I said, let go of work once to turn around and snatch a motherfucking dog. And that dog just kind of had it come. You know what I mean? Like the dog had it come. Can't do. But anyway, when he set to task, he set to task, and I love that about him. Right? Um, what else do we say? Um, he really has the size and structure that's perfect. It, it, let me say that again. Here's the size and build, right? That's perfect. He comes up short in the four leg department, right? And so it gives him less mobility than I'd like to see in him. But then his power is more that of a 90 five pound dog than a 70 74 pound dog right um it is necessary to understand that that, that he is he's the real he's the real goal right like I, I would throw a thousand of him if I could with small corrections, right? Small corrections. Um, but not to digress, the reason I point out his structure, or you know, we talk about this type of thing, is because in Camelot dogs, you will find dogs of all types of uh, breeding, if you will. Uh, for example, if you want to see an excellent example of the tr dogs that were bred to be bullies, right? Dogs that were actually bred to be bullies, go check out the Zulu Nation channel. Right, my boy's got the red lion, the shark dogs. Right, that's the strain of Camelot. They implemented something called some Chevy. Chevy runs back to some, you know, there's some mastiff in there. Right now, for whatever, for whatever, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, um. You also have a strain of Camelot that was cheaply boxed dogs. Now, again, defining Camelot. The term Camelot, when it comes to these red, red most fits, is really that name, that brand. Um, was developed kind of in two different directions by two different individuals who were once part of the same game. So, I don't know exactly what the nature of their relationship was. Some say, you know, you know, one worked for the other. I don't know. Um, what I do know is that um, the base of Camelot dogs comes from what's commonly called Peterson McKenna red dogs, right? The big red Peterson McKenna dogs. That blood is as old as, as any blood out there. You know, we talking about going back to the Thor dog and, you know, like, I could go on, but that's, that's for a whole other video. Um, with the Camelot dogs, you have those who are breeding for that bully appearance, right? And then you have those who are breeding for the performance and other parts that the dogs do. You know, the, the performance, the actual work 
Right. So now. There's something for everybody. Right. The thing I need people to understand is that that bully side of the Camelot world, um, that's something that kind of took off in and of its own. And, you know, there was some weight pulling and all of that involved. Um, but with the working side, right? Um, those animals are very, very tightly bred. Um, one of the things you have to understand about this Camelot shit is, you know, it, it's not bred. It hasn't undergone what the American bully has undergone in the sense that it has gone. Um, What's happening in the Camelot world, man, is that they kept the heat, right, and just bred bigger dogs. Now, some of the size and 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 all of that was was uh, garnered by breeding old family red nose dogs, you know, which average 60, 70 pound dogs, um, into American Staffordshire. And uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the American Staffordshire. Because there seems to be a misconception, right, that the American Staffordshire Terrier is a different breed than the American Pit Bull Terrier. As we shall see shortly, that's not the case at all. As we're going to see in a minute, um, even the ADBA acknowledges that the American Staffordshire Terrier is nothing but the American Pitbull Terrier right for the show right. They acknowledge that there's been no other influx of any other breed into that dog. So now, if you can breathe the heat out of a dog, I'm sorry, you can breathe the heat back in. Like, there ain't no one-way streets in nature. Now, it may take generations upon generations. But depending upon the breeder, this is not inconceivable at all. Now, the question arises... The, the, the Camelot working side of the dog borrows its history, borrows its temperament, borrows its attitude, its disposition from the old family red nose. They are very, very driven dogs. When set to task, understand that they are going to leave it all on the table. That's what they do. And handling my dogs, I've learned that they go so fucking hard. Winter, summer, spring, fall. That I have to be conscious of, whoa, man, listen, you don't hurt yourself. What are you doing? Like, I literally have to be this way with my dog. Like, I gotta stop them. <laughs> so, this is part of, you know, the challenge of dealing with a larger dog that has the same drive as your, 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 your 40 pound rocket. When that starts happening in a 75, 80 pound dog, you need to make adjustments, right? And you need to be sure that you're in a position, right? Because 
and some of y'all may have seen from that video, Conditioning Pitbulls Gone Wrong, you know, I was able to, in, in, in reasonably decent time, get those dogs separated. Um, but my method of separation was very heavy handed. And in addition, you have to have the muscle conditioning and stamina to literally hold two dogs apart from each other that are trying to get at each other. And I don't know if you've ever tried that, but like that shit ain't no game, right? So I say all of that to say that. The Camelot situation is a, it's, it's, it's a one-off. It's a special situation, man. Because as we go, as we, as we'll see, if we go through these ADBA joints, listen, this dog is, is it don't fit into none of their reclassification uh, 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 categories. So without further ado, Let's get right into that. All right, all right, all right, y'all. So, um, this is basically what I've been talking about. Um, this is the uh, ADBA's brief reclassification letter uh, that they released, and uh, this was actually a couple of years back now. You know, what I mean, this is this is almost five years old, but. The gist of this is that they have broken down breed reclassification into three different categories, right? Jenny, now, I this from Muggs, but you... they're reclassifying dogs from certain bloodlines, and they're using photos that were submitted online, uh, photos that exist online. Uh, particularly photos and um, submissions from certain bloodlines and certain kennels, right? And this effort at breed reclassification uh, a dog will also qualify for reclassification if it's registered with another registry other than the eight uh, American Pit Bull Terrier, right? Um, they say that uh, they will be breaking it down into three main classes, right? That's your American Staffordshire Terrier, right? So you see they have a picture of an Amstaff here, and I suppose this is also supposed to be Amstaff. Um, but so you have Amstaff, American Bully, and Working Pit Bulldog. So those are your three breed reclassifications or re reclassification categories. Right? Now The Amstaff, right, and that's the only one that I'm going to dive into here today right now. The video is actually long enough. Regarding the Amstaff, the American Kennel Club says, or, or the ADBA says, that the American Kennel Club, the AKC, started allowing American Pit Bull Terriers, ADBA and UKC registered, American Pit Bull Terriers into the AKC stud books because of the whole little rascals and Petey thing. But what they did to make it more, I guess, friendly, they changed the breed name to American Staffordshire Terrier. Some 
The breed name was changed at that time to American Staffordshire Terrier for the dogs admitted into the AKC stud book. Now, y'all see, these are not my words. This is what they're saying happened, right? So now, all right. They go on to say, the history shows that no other breeds have been influxed into the development of these dogs. So this dog called the American Staffordshire Terrier is genetically 100% American Pit Bull Terrier. Now, it says that fanciers have developed a standard for their dogs and the breeding goal of many of the breeders was for the look of the dog, not so much the heritage pur purpose as an athletic fighting dog. So now, any, sing any new single registrations of AKC registered American Staffordshire Terriers will be registered as American Staffordshire Terriers with the ADBA. The key point for our purposes, especially regarding the Camelot dogs, is it says any current ADBA registered dogs with 75% or more of AKC registered American Staffordshire Terrier within their ancestry and exhibiting American Staffordshire Terrier breed type can elect to have their dog recognized under the breed name American Staffordshire Terrier. So that's an important question that we're going to have to answer when examining the uh, So, pardon the interruption, you know, they in they spot, they hear something pop off, that's what they do. Um, but so, you know, we have this, this very, you know, it says, any current ADBA registered dogs with American Staffordshire terri Terriers within their ancestry and exhibiting and staff terrier breed type can elect to have their dog recognized under the breed name American Staffordshire Terrier. So again, this is a very important question that we're going to have to answer when we look into the genetics and the 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 uh the pedigrees right of some of these camelot dogs right are we uh, is this 75 percent or more and staff crossed into these dogs right because uh and and i'm going to reiterate that the Camelot, for the Camelot dog, and, and this kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but the Camelot dog, from what we can see so far, right, it's old family red nose crossed back into Amstaff, right? Now, we've established that Amstaff is actually 100% American Pit Bull Terrier. And we know that old family red nose is 100% American Pit Bull Terrier. So, this particular cross that we're seeing is not a new cross, right? We can see this cross going back to Tudor and Corvino, where the Amstaff actually came from, right? So, again, you know, I'm not going to belabor some of these points because we've, we've, we've done these in previous videos. But as far as the ADBA is concerned, right? Now, that's something you can get behind. It remains to be seen whether or not the Camelot dog qualifies as Amstaff, right? So, 
it goes on to say that because of the close genetic history, and now we're going to talk about phenotype or, or, or phenotype or, or body type, physical type, right? Physical structure and such. All right. Because of the close genetic history to the American pit bull terrier, the general look of the American Staffordshire terrier should reflect this relationship. The American Staffordshire terrier should give the impression of overall strength for his size, muscular, but still agile and graceful, not coarse or bulky. All right. Goes on to say he should appear. Stocky, with wide shoulders and hip, not long-legged or racy in outline. Okay? Some of this is splitting hairs, you know. Like, but, whatever. He should carry himself with confidence. Being keenly alert to surroundings. His courage is proverbial. Proverbial. The dog's head is distinctly deep and broad. It should be broad, not bored. But uh, the dog's head is distinctly deep and broad with pronounced cheeks. And a distinct stop. <clears throat> All right, we can go into ears, can be cropped or natural, set high on the skull. Dog's muzzle medium in length, jaws well defined, lips close, even without looseness. The dog's coat is short, glossy, slightly stiff to the touch in any color or combination of colors, but all white, more than 80% white, black and tan, and liver should not be encouraged. Wow. Well, I mean, that right there, uh, that right there is definitely an issue because we throw all whites sometimes. Or it's close to all white, it's, you know. But anyway, dogs with merle color pattern will not be registered within the American Staffordshire Terrier breed classification with the ADBA. All right. Height and weight should be in proportion. Males should be 18 to 19 inches at the withers. Females should be 17 to 18 inches preferred. So that's all they say about the American staff is shy. They don't really get into weight so much, um, which I would find an interesting, uh, interesting detail myself. But, so, there's that, right? Um, I'm going to tell you straight off, based on what I've seen in the pedigrees of these dogs, the Amstaff is, is nowhere near 75%. So, it really, you know, it begs the question, you know, just where does this Camelot dog sit? Where does this Camelot dog stand in the grand scheme of things? One of the problems that I'm having with this is that, um, and and mind you, we've just covered the American Staffordshire Terrier. We're gonna cover each of these in turn, uh, in the, in the next video. But from the pedigrees that I've seen, especially from my boys' pedigree. And, and baby girls pedigree that 75% staff shit is out right so we know that according to the ADVA's brief reclassification so far at least from my research and I'm going to put that research out here available for everybody to see um, but uh, there is no such thing as 
the whole um, Camelot being Amstaff. Now, nevertheless, you have to understand that OFRN was crossed into Amstaff, and that was a part of the creation of these Camelot dogs, right? The Camelot dogs, again, go back to the, uh, the McKenna stuff, the Peterson stuff, and, uh, you know, um, that is a history in, in, in itself. But again, we will deal with Camelot history in and of itself. Right now, let's talk about what Camelot is not. We know it's not. So we know it's not qualified to be called Amstaff, right? Not according to the ADBA. Now, I'm always open to opinions. You know, um, all my Camelot people, man, you got them dogs. Listen, get at me. Get at me with them pets. Let's put them out there um i recently got a request for to to to, to do a pet uh breakdown on, on a dog man i mean when you talk about this shit being is it it's so tight it's ridiculous <coughs> and um I, I'm just really curious to see if there's anything else out there bred like this dog is bred and, and when you put that together, what it would throw. But I'm going to put that out there too, you know, um, all in due time. Um, I might just, just like open up a playlist or something, man, for us to just, you know what I mean, just throw pads out there, man, and talk dogs regardless of where the fuck they come from. Um, now I do have to you know, preface that by saying, I can't do the American bully pets. I don't know a whole lot about them dogs. And I just, you know, I'm, I'm at a loss there. I'm, I'm at a loss there. If you can trace the pet back to a game bred dog, I'm good with it. You know what I mean? But that's the kind of registry I work with. I, I don't, I'm not familiar with ABKC and such. So, you know, pardon me if you find me lacking there. Um, but with all of that said, um, in our next segment, we will actually be covering the American bully. Um, we'll be covering the um, ABBA's um, standards for the reclassification process for dogs that should be or, or <clears throat> are being reclassified as American bullies. And uh, those dogs uh, should definitely, um, you know, they'll have their standards and everything. We'll go over those standards and we'll compare that to what's going on with the Camelot dog. And we'll see whether or not, you know, as people say, the Camelot dog is an American bully. Them is bully, 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 bully. It's like, you know, I hear dudes hopping on my, and, you know, not hear them, but, you know, dudes hopping a comment screaming this bully, bully, bully shit. Man, listen, if y'all know me. But I'm going to leave it at that right now because I don't want to drag this out. So y'all holler at me if you got um if you got uh camelot dogs with with pedigrees and so forth and so on and y'all want to get into them man let's do that let's do that we can definitely put it out there for the people we can answer for the answer the question for the people man what is this camelot dog what is this camelot dog is this a pit bull is this a bully if it is a pit bull why do they say it's not if it's not a pit bull why does it uh exhibit the tendencies of the pit bull um and if it's not an american bully you know what is the difference between the camelot dog and you know what, what what has come to be known as the american bully and what is accepted as the you know the com the 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 common standard for the breed uh so we'll cover all of that you know what i mean so today we we, we definitely got into the american staffordshire terrier um uh we know that the again we you know we know that the uh camelot dog was the uh result of ofrn crossed into amstaff um but at the end of the day that um that didn't necessarily result in 75% Amstaff, you know, 
it wasn't that heavy across at all. Um, and the typical, I guess, lack of drive that you that 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 you might say that the Amstaff has. That's not your Camelot dog, you know. I, I get the Amstaff being courageous and all of that. That's different from a dog with a very high drive, right? Like a dog that is in, instantly turned on at anything with four legs, right? So, or you know, and in the right situation, anything with two legs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, so, you know, I'm going to thank y'all for tuning in, man. That's all I got to say for this one. Um, as far as I'm concerned, Camelot Pit Bulls do not form this re reclassification category of American Staffordshire Terrier. If you think believe if you think or believe different, y'all get at me, man. Hit me up in the comments. I'm responding to all comments. If you get disrespectful, I will remind you your mother don't work here. Alright, so other than that. Y'all keep the heat. Curry flame kennels.